So you have no friends to play with. I'm just kidding. I know a lot of you don't have a five stack to play with at all times. So I just wanted to make this video to help those of you out who still want to play solo queue, but at the same time still be successful in this game. Well, I have five tips on both attack and defense that can help you still be able to rank up while playing by yourself. Keep in mind that my highest rank is plat, so I may not be the best person to take advice from here, but I'd like to think I fall into where most the majority of players are in, so I think this may be able to help out the most of you, so let me know down in the comments if you find any of these tips helpful. This is a free tip right here that can apply for both attacking and defending in this game. Becoming comfortable with all operators and guns. This is a given and you should get comfortable using all operators. You'll be able to know what recoil patterns are to what guns and you'll be able to know what all gadgets are appropriate in certain situations. And knowing all the gadgets and utility that each operator has will give you the knowledge of knowing which operator to bring in any circumstance. And if you get comfortable with all of them, there will never be a time where you feel out of place or uncomfortable. You can use any operator that will help the team, which will lead us into the number one tip for attacking. Starting with the attack side, we got tip number one. Play whatever the team needs. I know you want to play the operators you're best with or you feel like you have the most gun skill. But if your team already has someone that falls under that role, why use them? If there is no hard breach to the team and you need to get a wall open, you should be able to see that and make a switch to like a thermite or an ace to help you out. If you fill the team's weakness, then you'll be way more likely to win the round, as well as keep the teammates happy. This game is not about how many kills that you can get, it's about how you win the game and can win each round. You should be comfortable getting low kills for a win, playing more of a support role, versus high kills and still losing the game. Obviously this doesn't apply to everybody and some people are naturally going to get more kills than another, but you shouldn't take how many kills you have as in how much effort you're putting in. Keep in mind that it's wins over kills. If you drop four kills in a round and you still lose the round, there is something that you could have done more to help the team. I know that's gonna be controversial, but I'm going to stand on that. Number two, have awareness. You're probably thinking that it's a no-brainer to be aware of where your enemies are. And yes, that is a big part of it, but you should also be aware of what your teammates are doing as well. Now I know most of you will just try to drone out the enemies and try to go about your round getting the kills and making your way to sight. But you should be able to see what your teammates are doing and what their plan of attack is, even without communication. As someone who is solo queued, you should be wanting to play off of what your team is doing instead of what you want to do. If you go off and do your own thing, you are making it a 1v5 on yourself, and just trust me, it may work some of the times, but you shouldn't rely on that, especially up in the higher ranks. It doesn't make that much sense to enter the map alone, far away from everyone, and try to have to go through each enemy to get to the site. Instead, try going with a teammate and play off of what they're doing. If they're holding an angle into the site, try holding the flank, or vice versa. Try to take advantage of what your team is doing to help dictate your next move. As much as this game is gun skill, it is also like a chess match. Who can outsmart the other? Number three, look for weaknesses in the defense. You can use your drone to scout the site as an attacker to see where the best route of attack you can go. If nobody is watching a certain way into sight, then you know that pushing there will probably be your best bet to get into sight uncontested. I'm not saying solo push into the objective by yourself because that won't get you very far. But if you can communicate to your team what you think is the best bet for attack, and this may not work every time randoms are pretty unpredictable, but even if they push through a contested spot that you think isn't the right decision, you can still find weaknesses in that area as well, whether it's utility-wise or where the enemies are located. Have an attack planned out in your mind based off of where certain weaknesses are on the defense and what your teammates are doing, and you'll be putting yourself ahead of the game. Number four, stop droning so far ahead of yourself. Now I know a lot of you like to drone a little bit too far, as in three to four to five rooms ahead, but once you've gotten out of that first room and you're in the fourth or fifth room, that first room information is old news. Anybody could have snuck in there by now and you are just going to be walking into a death trap. Instead, I recommend droning one to two rooms ahead of you, entering the site, 
and then drone another one to two rooms ahead of you as well. That way your information is more current and you'll have more of a chance of having a successful entry into the building and you'll minimize the risk of dying. I seen a tip the other day that said for every room that you go into, there's a 5% chance there's an enemy in there. So just entering in a room, 5% chance is not that big. But the more rooms you go into that you have no idea where an enemy is, is just adding to the percentage that you will get killed. So just stop droning so far ahead and just drone a couple rooms ahead of you at a time. Tip number five, stop trying to do too much. Now I know you feel like you have to get all five kills each and every round, but the truth is you really don't. If you put yourself in a kill only mindset, that will put you in bad positions to get flanked from the enemy team or from somebody where you wouldn't even expect. Be okay with getting your one or two kills and then rotating. Don't feel like you have to do everything yourself. You're just going to stress yourself out and then you're going to make mental mistakes and then you're just going to get more frustrated and it's going to build on top of that. I guess you can go ahead and throw staying calm in there as well. Now let's move on to the defensive side. I'm copying this tip from attacking, but this is play whatever the team needs. If you need a bandit or a cade because you see there is no wall denial, don't be afraid to go one of those operators. Like I said, it's not about how many kills you get, it's just about if you can win the round or not. If you need an informative operator on the team, then go one. Whatever you feel like can help the team best, then that should be your next move. You should also be the last person to pick your operator so that way you can see what everybody is running and make your decisions based off that. Tip number two, stop roaming so far away from sight. There is so many times where I'll see roamers try to get behind the attackers by hiding on the other side of the map. And while that is good, if they decide to rush into sight and you are left on the other side of the map, it'll take you so much longer to get back to sight and they'll probably hear you or catch you on your way back. I recommend trying to hide out maybe a couple rooms away or just underneath the site. That way you're not too far and if you get a call out from a teammate, you'll be able to react on that information faster than you would be if you were all the way on the other side of the map. The only way I recommend being on the other side of the map is if you're on cameras and you see that someone spawned far away on the other side of the map by themselves, then that might be a good time to go get an early kill. But other than that, I recommend not staying too far away from the objective just so you're able to react on any information or any event that may happen during that round. Number three, pay attention to where your teammates die. A lot of you will pay attention to just one enemy and won't care about nothing else and it's what we call tunnel vision. If a teammate dies right behind you and you don't see that, that could lead to your death because you are not paying attention to everything that is going on. This goes back to the tip even for attacking, just paying attention to what's going on with your teammates will work wonders for you because yes, you want to pay attention to the enemies, but you also want to know what your teammates are doing as well. Just paying attention all around to everything is a big tip that I can give you because a lot of people only pay attention to the enemy team. Tip number four, try to fill where you are the weakest. If you notice that the site setup may be weak on one side of the site, then try to do what you can to fulfill that weakness to make it a better hold all around. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go and hold that spot, but just giving the attackers something to think about on any way that they can enter the site is never a bad idea. On defense, you shouldn't be so focused on trying to kill the enemies as much as you're trying to waste utility and waste their time. Just pay attention to the site setup and where you think it could be weakest, just expect the enemies to attack there. Just pay attention to the site setup. Going on to tip number five, don't be too aggressive. Now I know if it's a 5v1, you want to be the person to get that kill. Trust me, I've been there before myself and sometimes I still fall victim to it. But if you all just throw your life one at a time to this person, it'll give them a way higher percentage of a clutch. And honestly, one kill is not worth losing a round over. What you should try to learn to do is refrain yourself from wanting to jump out and get these last couple kills knowing that you have the advantage. And instead, make them push up to you. You can sit there and hold a site and it may be boring. If you can sit and hold a site where you think they're about to come from, they will walk up to you and they'll have no choice but to give you a free kill. I promise you, do not go chasing after kills outside. That's something I cannot stress enough and something I've seen backfire time and time again in this game. 
right, that's going to wrap it up for all the tips that I have for you guys. And if this helped you guys, please leave it down in the comments below. And if you guys have any tips, attacker or defender sided, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I enjoy reading each and every one of your tips that you guys have given out, and they have been great ones so far. We are on the road to 1,000 subscribers, man. We just hit 750 today at the time of me recording this video. I couldn't be more thankful, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. I'm glad to have you guys along with me for the ride. It means the world to me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.